Hey everybody and welcome. We are so excited you're here joining us today talking all about family engagement. I'm super excited to be welcoming Justin here from Eugene, Oregon. I am Chris, your host. We're going to be chatting all about how families can be engaged and how that powerful learning loop can be connected with our communities. Justin, I'll let you introduce yourself really quick before we jump right in. Yeah, my name is Justin Huntley. I'm a curriculum administrator here in uh, Eugene School District uh, out in Oregon. Um, we're, the, I think, the, the fifth largest district here in Oregon. Um, we've got uh, four comprehensive high schools um, and eight middle schools and I think 20, 21 elementary schools. So um, a lot going on, a lot going on. I've been, uh, been in education for... Oh, 26 years now. Um, most of those have been as a uh, secondary administrator, but uh, for the last five, I've been been enjoying life uh, in the curriculum department uh, um, here at the the district office. Awesome, awesome! I love it. That's you. You bring such a wide breadth of experiences, which is always great. It helps you to just really serve your community, serve your teachers in the right way. We're going to kick off with a pretty basic question here, Justin. Why is family engagement important for you in your role? Um, you know, I, I think it's something that I, I've learned over my years of, of uh, being a school administrator. Um, you know, I thought as a high school principal, I did a good job um, getting things out, using social media, kind of using the latest technology and um, kind of, you know, you, you get that high insight, uh, hindsight. And, uh, you know, you realize you could have done a better job. Um, and, and I will say having, having daughters and having, having kids grow up within the system, um, elementary teachers do, do a far better job than secondary teachers at communicating with parents. Um, they send a lot of things home. You kind of have an idea what's happening in the classroom. And as they get older, the the disconnect between families and uh, school just just widens, um, and I think we can do a better job um, opening the doors and opening you know um, the window into the classroom. Um, and that's you know one of the reasons I'm I'm a real proponent of seesaw uh, is it does just that. So um, and and does it in a way that that no other tool does. Is there anything you do at the beginning of the year specifically that really helps to kick off this climate you're aiming for? A positive connection with your community, a positive connection with your families. Um, you know, um, Eugene's a, a unique community in that uh, we have a lot of individuality, um, even amongst our schools. And so um, there has, has been a lot of, of unique efforts at, at various buildings um, that are different. And so it's not necessarily a unified um, district way of going about it, uh, but I think our schools have done a good job reaching out. They, they host the various, various events um, at the beginning of the school year where they're inviting those families into the schools, um, you know, whether it be an open house or, or they, they just have some, some very unique community type activities where they reach out and um, and some of them have picnics, some of them have barbecues um, and, and they invite, invite their their community to the school uh, and try to get connected um, that way. And, um, you know, it's funny too. you know, communications always changing. And so folks are changing their phone numbers and, um, you know you'll get those families that still have their, their original email and, you know, they've got their Yahoo, uh, or AOL, AOL and, and, you know, you have to kind of chuckle when, when those come across, but then there's others that are changing them, you know, monthly. And it's like trying to keep up with how best to communicate, uh, and reach those parents. And so you've got to, you've got to reach out, you've got to connect them to the school in some way, uh, and inviting them in. And, and the more that you can, get that regular communication set up, uh, the better off you're going to be. What has been the most impactful change you've made in your role to help to increase family engagement? <laughs> um, I think 
the in my role, my my biggest um, strength or or impact that I I've had is being able to work directly with principals to show them the tools available, um, you know, specifically to get them familiar with how to use um, seesaw. So that professional development that you that you do up front um, to help folks. Um, especially at the beginning of the year, everybody, you know, there's never enough time at the beginning of the year, but um, to, to spend the time, etch it out, do the professional development. So people have the, the, at least awareness that the tool is there. Um, and then maybe in a couple of weeks when they can take a deep breath and go, okay, I, I need, you know, come out and help me um, walk me through this so that I can, start to start to do this tool um i think that's the biggest you know the upfront loading and the upfront work um can pay huge dividends in the end um and so it's just a matter of of forcing yourself to sit down and learn that new tool um and and i met with a principal just last week and and she was asking me what this exact question, what, what's the best way to communicate with my parents? Um, and, you know, I walked her through, through the tools and, and, and what you can do within Seesaw. But then I said, Hey, you know, again, you've got to reach parents where they're at. You, you, you know, she was used to doing the, this newsletter and using, you know, I think s'more to use, to do that newsletter. And Hey, if you're already doing that, keep doing it. Um, just add another tool to your tool belt. Um, just add another way to, to reach out because the more that you can do, um, the more tools you can do, you're meeting parents where they're at. And so um, just trying to convince folks that tr just try it, you know, just send one message, see what happens. Um, and just, just getting them over that phobia of I've never used this. And now all of a sudden I'm going to use it as my communication tool to, to, as my first interaction with a parent, um, it's like, no, no, it's, it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, you can always, you can all just like we're doing here, we can always delete it, go back. Um, and, and you can ask me that question again. Um, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not the end of the world. And so, um, trying to get them over that phobia, uh, at the beginning, I think is, is important. If I were to give advice to another district, um, one of the things that that we just kind of don't have the ability to do here is, is kind of that top down, um, you know, edict of this is exactly how you're going to communicate. Um, um, so we we have a, an interesting district in that um, we're very. Uh, very site based in our management and not district based. And so um, that has its pros and cons. Um, but, you know, in a district where you are centralized um, to be consistent in your communication, because if I'm a parent and um, I've got a middle school student, a high school student and an elementary student, and I'm getting communicated with three different ways, it's hard for me to keep up mm -hmm. again. Let's meet that parent where they're at and make sure that that parent, whatever it is that they're using, whether it be social media, whether they're using the, the, the app, um, whether they're getting on Canvas, that it's very clear um, on, on how to access those tools. And so, uh, and, and to do it multiple ways, you know, if you do a letter, a newsletter, uh, make sure you're just copying that link and you're dropping it into a message and you're sending that via whatever message system you're, you're, you're sending. Uh, you don't necessarily have to recreate it. Um, you can just send a link to it. Um, but at least they have access to it. And I think access is the key. Uh, we're real cognizant of trying to make sure that we are putting out messages that uh, are multilingual. Um, we want to make sure that we're we're hitting all of our families, that we're not just catering to to the you know the, the dominant majority. Um, we want everybody to be connected, and so looking for tools that translate into multiple languages. Uh, yeah. Um, having sat down with one of our, our teachers at one of our high SEL uh, population schools, um, she talked about how powerful it was to use Seesaw in that it broke down that communication barrier. You know, the parent at home didn't speak any English and she didn't speak the language of that student, um, the home language of that student. And so Seesaw allowed her to to break down those those communication barriers because 
they could chat two ways and it would translate for each of them. Um, and so kept them connected, kept kept that parent involved in what was happening in the classroom, allowed her, uh, you know, an avenue or a venue to be able to communicate. Uh, and it just broke down all those walls. And so uh, if we're not using technology to do those kinds of things, I mean, you're missing the boat. It, it's the 21st century. There's no reason um, why these things can't happen. Um, there are so many tools, um, so many really good tools that do this. And, and so, um, if you, if you don't, if you don't find one that works, um, you're not trying very hard. In the terms of maybe starting the year, or even if you have new families coming in, if you've ever come across a, a challenge or a barrier that was just tricky for you to overcome. And if you did, what did you do to get through that barrier? How did you bridge that gap to be able to have that positive connection that you were aiming for? Yeah, and um, I'm going to kind of go back to my earlier answer, and, and um, I, I know Eugene as a community, along with a lot of communities around the nation right now, are are seeing a rise in homelessness and um, just a lack of access. Um, and so, I think that that partnership that we were able to have, where we were providing cell phones and cell service and internet service. Um, to those families um, and really breaking down those barriers um, is, is huge, um, you know, and, and again, one less barrier for a family that's, uh, that's really experiencing trauma and going through some difficult times. If we can break those barriers down and, and give them the access they need to communicate with the teacher, which it, that's our goal. We we want to to connect that parent directly with that that teacher in that school. Uh, if we can provide at a fairly low cost uh, a way to do that, um, you know, I, I I think the benefits far far outweigh the the expense. So you know why I'm a proponent of seesaw is is because of the student voice. You know. Um, Parents don't necessarily want to hear the principal's message. They don't want to read through all of the, the pieces and parts. You know, we we got my my teachers at, at the elementary or my daughters, they sent stuff home every Friday. And, you know, it became the newspaper to me. Uh, it came every day. And if there was something catchy, I looked at it. If not, you know, it it you know, I didn't really pay attention and I didn't ask my student about it either. I just looked at it and that was the end of it. Whereas with Seesaw, I think the power is I get to hear my kid narrate what they're learning in the classroom. Um, you know, whether that's over the top of a picture that they've taken or they're doing an actual video and I'm, I'm listening to that, watching that. I'm going to watch that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be tied right into that. You know, I'm not going to get tired of, of hearing my kid um, with that little short video clip um, talk, you know, it, you know, so, and I'm going to share the share with the person next to me. Oh, look at my kid. You know, it's, it's, it's the dad pulling out their wallet of pictures, you know, but it's, it's, Hey, here's my kid. Look what my kid's doing. Um, you know, I, I just, I can't stress enough how important I think that tool is. And and the other piece I think it does is it, because I have that window into the classroom, when, when my student gets home and I ask them, I'm not asking them, hey, what'd you do today? And I'm going to get the answer, nothing. You know, and that's the classic answer, right? Um, and then you have to like probe and pull teeth to figure out what they did in, in class today. No, I got to see exactly what they did in class today. And I'm going to ask that specific question. Uh, you know, oh, I got to watch you your video today. You know, tell me about that. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to get excited as well because, um, you know, you, you saw something they did. Um, so it, it's it just takes takes the barriers down. It takes those, you know, the curtains off the window. I can see what it is that they're doing every day. So uh, I just want to close up with saying thank you so much, Justin, for being here. Thank you for chatting about family engagement and family involvement in your schools. We learned a ton from what you guys are doing here, and we're very excited to share your stories with everybody who's interested in continuing to grow their family engagements and bridge their family connections. Thank you so much, Justin.
Thank you.